Hello and welcome back to Psychology with Mr. Snyder and today we're going to be talking about still staying in the biology chapter and we're getting into the endocrine system and heredity. Don't ask about the picture if you don't know it was just a quote from Gary Busey in about 2008 where he threatened to rip the endocrine system out of a man's body and I really don't think that's possible. Today our learning targets include identifying what the three major glands of the endocrine system are and what their role in the body are because there are other glands that are involved but we're just going to talk about the three major ones. We'll define the functions of the ovaries and the testes and we'll talk about the main points of the nature-nurture debate as far as heredity goes. So the three major glands of the endocrine system are the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, and the adrenal gland. And all of these glands secrete hormones. And hormones are chemicals that are released into our blood that control our growth, our metabolism, our sexual functioning, our mood even, and a whole lot more. So they are very, very important in everyday life. And an imbalance of these hormones can cause a person to feel depressed, or moody or they could cause weight gain because their metabolism isn't up to speed can cause a lack of sexual drive there's a lot of problems that hormones can cause and the master gland that is in charge of all the other ones is called the pituitary gland it's a small little gland that lies just below the hypothalamus in the brain and it secretes hormones uh, most importantly, including HGH, or the, pro the hormone that helps you grow as a teenager, human hormone, prolactin, and oxytocin. And sometimes these pituitary hormones stimulate other glands, such as the adrenal glands, thyroid gland, and the ovaries or the testes. So that's why the pituitary gland is called the master gland. I would make a note of that. The thyroid gland produces the hormone thyroxin, and that affects the body's metabolism. It's in your neck. So all your food goes through your neck. That is an easy way to remember that. Too little thyroxin can cause hypothyroidism, and people with hypothyroidism tend to gain weight very easily. They may be lethargic or slow, um, tired all the time, and too much thyroxin can cause hyperthyroidism. The adrenal glands are the third set. Those are located just above the kidneys. The outer layer secretes corticosteroids, and those increase a person's resistance to stress, promote a person's muscle development, and make the liver release stored sugar to provide extra energy during emergencies. These are the glands that produce adrenaline and noradrenaline. And here is a diagram of where they are found in the body. The pituitary gland, very small, right in the middle of the brain. The thyroid gland controls the body's metabolism. The adrenal glands are located just above the kidney, which helps the body deal with stress. And then we are going to move on to the sexual glands, the testes and the ovaries, which produce other hormones. Ovaries in females and testes in males, obviously, produce hormones that influence your sexual development and functioning. It's important to know that both of these glands produce the three hormones called estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Now, estrogen and progesterone are the female sex hormones, and they help to regulate the menstrual cycle. Um, a good amount of estrogen has psychological as well as biological effects and low levels of estrogen and progesterone as I said before are found in males if a male has too much estrogen they can begin to develop female sex characteristics like um, enlarged breasts rounded hips things of that nature same thing goes for testosterone Same thing goes for testosterone. Testosterone is the male sex hormone, so males produce a lot of this and a little 
of the other estro estrogen and progesterone, small amounts of testosterone are found in females. And if a female has too much testosterone, they can start to develop male sex characteristics like a um, like a masculine body build or enlarged muscles, uh, hair on the face, hair on the upper lip, that could be a cause of too much testosterone. But in males, it helps lead to the aid of muscle and bone growth. It also aids in the development of primary and secondary sex characteristics, and we'll go over those in the development unit. But primary are obviously a, the penis, and secondary includes the growth of hair in different places on the body, among other things. Heredity, your last learning target. In heredity, and in psychology, and in the debates we're doing right now, the debate over the role of biology in determining who we are as people is called nature-nurture issue. Nature refers to what we inherit and nurture refers to different environmental factors in a person's upbringing. So the nature supporters argue that it's biology, it's a person's genes and their heredity that determines people's traits and personalities. And nurture supporters argue that the environment a person is brought up in and everyday experiences they're exposed to determine how we behave and think. It's important to know that both these views are extreme. Psychologists now think that it's a combination of nature and nurture that determine a person's psychological traits, but the controversy is how much nature and how much nurture. And a way we can find this out is with kinship studies. Types of kinship studies focus on the roles that heredity and the environment play in determining a trait. And we use kinship because it refers to the degree to which two people are related. We can do studies on identical and fraternal twins. Also, it's important to know that we can do studies on twins that are reared apart. We can also do studies on twins that were reared apart because if identical twins who are geni uh, genetically identical, if we can rear them apart, you know, for na normal reasons, if they're reared, reared apart and they still are alike, it makes it more likely that similarities are attributable to genetic factors. Let's take homosexuality, for example. If we have two identical twins that are reared apart and the lack of common experience they have makes it more likely that homosexuality can be attributed to a biological factor. We can also do adoptee studies and children who have been adopted, we can take a look at how similar they are to their biological parents compared to their adoptive parents and whichever they are more similar to we can say that that is a correlation between whether it is heredity, heredity or the environment that, we, that they were raised in. And that's the end of today's lesson. Hopefully you found it informational and enjoyable, and I'll see you in class.